Bet Online is your number one source for the NBA and NHL playoffs this season. Every stat, every matchup, and even live odds while the games are being played. When the game's over, head on over to our online casino and get in on the game of blackjack or poker or unwind with one of our over 150 slot games. Head to the website today to get in on the action. Don't forget to use promo code BLEAV for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online, the game starts here. Ding dong, the witch is dead. Angel Hernandez retires. Oh, and some Astro stuff too. Right here on Believe in Astro. What's up, Astros fans? This game has turned upside down! Welcome to the Believe in Astros podcast with your host, sports writer Jeff Balky and former pitcher and Astros broadcaster Mike Stanton. Direct from H-Town, here's Balky and Stan. What is up, Astros fans? Welcome to episode 116 of the Believe in Astros podcast on the Believe Podcasting Network. I'm Jeff Balky on an extremely stormy afternoon. Uh, I'm staring out my window and wondering if my power is going to make it. <laughs> Alongside my co-host, Mike Stanton. How are you doing yeah. today, Mike? I'm doing well. That storm just, I'm on the north side. Uh, that storm had just come through, and it was it was pretty wicked. It doesn't last very long, but yeah. there was some pretty serious wind and rain. I'm down here in Oak Forest, a little closer to town. It's still coming yeah. pretty good. but uh, And I should acknowledge the fact that, I was out last week because the storm we had yeah, a week ago that we Thursday. Didn't love you people, I know. At least not me. Ooh, no, no Jeff, it was all me. Jeff was the issue. That was yeah. I, was, uh, I think was... I heard him say at one point, "You know what? <laughs> I don't like Astros fans anymore." That's no, that's right. not true. That's right. That's exactly right. <laughs> well, I lost power for five days after wow. that storm a week ago Thursday, and internet for six, and then right as I was re- uh, getting back to it, I got COVID. So it was a wasted week. L- l- just, just listen. It, the, I did buy a generator, so if the uh-huh. power goes out, I'll be ready. <laughs> right. um, I went ahead and just bit the bullet because hurricane season's coming. You may as well be ready. Um, but enough of that. I'm thankful to be back, and I'm ready to discuss baseball again with all the well, all of my fans. Before you do that, I just want to let you know that sounds miserable. Ugh. As hot and humid as it's been, no electricity, which means no AC. You know, Houston is the AC capital of the world. Yeah. For a reason. And um, yeah, we're all spoiled. I can't imagine, you know, my mother grew up in this area. Yeah, so did I mine. can't imagine. You know, they had a you know, they had an attic fan. Right. That's all they had. They had what they, they used to call it a sleeping porch. It was yes. just a screened in porch and called it a sleeping porch. I'm like, who sleeps but it on was that? outside? Oh. Yeah, it was miserable. <laughs> um it was it was one of those things too, I will say this. Like it was the only problem. It wasn't the heat and the humid. The heat and humidity were bad, but at night the problem was it's there, there was no air. It was None. still no and air. And so, like immediately air. after this was over, by the way, I began ordering things like battery powered fan. Like yes. that was like immediately. I'm like, that's that's enough of that. So finally, the day, of course, of course, the day the power came back on, I bought a generator. And I had a I had a window unit air conditioning already, just like laying uh-huh. around. So I shoved that in the window in my there bedroom, cranked it up, and then of course that night the power just right. yeah. <laughs> and, and and like, oh. and, and, but if it didn't, that's where you would have lived. You know that that's, that oh, little yeah. bedroom or whatever it was. <laughs> that's where you would have lived until the power came. And back the out. first people in this house in that bedroom were my dogs. Of they were like, they're they're like I'm like, you're, they I'm know. like, you, well, you guys are soft, man. Y'all are soft. What are y'all doing? Your dogs. You should right. be able to manage this. No, they were not having it. None they were not all. having it. All right. So first we need to address a couple of concerning injuries. Get these out of the way. Um, we saw uh, Jose Arquiti have to leave his rehab start in Sugarland with ar- forearm soreness. Not right. a good sign after he had already was, you know, coming back from that. Yeah. Now we also hear that Christian Javier is being placed on the IL with his own forearm soreness. Now, the thing with Javier is that comes on the heels of a game where his velocity was down a couple mm-hmm. miles an hour. Um, so not a good sign. And it's ironic considering, you know, starting pitching was something we came into the season thinking would probably be a strength. Yeah, I mean that was something that Dana Brown was was uh, was praising all the way through spring training was this the the depth of the starting pitching, and that you had guys coming back, you know, guys guys like Luis Garcia and Lance McCullers Jr. Now they're not here yet; they're right. they're on the way. Um, but yeah, as soon as you think you've had 
you have enough pitching, then you figure out that you don't. As far as Jose Urquidy is concerned, he was actually throwing the ball pretty well through the first three innings. It was that fourth inning he goes out there. And I mean, I'm not going to speculate. Uh, mm-hmm. I can tell you what my worries are, which is always the worst yeah. when it comes to elbows, especially since that was what he originally went on the IL for right. was, uh, you know, an elbow injury. Uh, so the way he was flexing his hand, it just did not look good. And yeah. uh, haven't got any big reports on what's going on there yet. Uh, but uh, that, you know, you go down with the same injury that you went on the IL with. It's that's not a good situation. And Javier, for Christian Javier, the you know the problem we have here is you know we talked about his velocity being down all last year, mm-hmm. okay, and it's been up and down a little bit. Now velocity doesn't necessarily mean that he's got an injury if the velocity's down, right. but it could be an indicator. Maybe it's one of the symptoms, and for him to go down with uh, uh, you know elbow or forearm soreness. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll tell you, it's it, 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 it. History just tells me too many times of where this is going. We'll yep. keep our fingers crossed, and that's not the case because you remember we the Astros have had one of the few occasions when it didn't go to surgery. That is right, and that was with Frommer. Yep, you know Frommer went down with elbow, uh, you know elbow soreness, and he took some time off, came back, and cross, yep. keep our fingers crossed. So far, so good. But usually it goes to something much more severe than just a, a couple of weeks on the IL. Yeah. And when you look at it, it's it's so interesting to me and, and not in a happy way. But, you know, when you think for a moment, the season we expected to have was Justin Verlander, Framber Valdez, Christian Javier, Hunter Brown, Jose Arquiti, JP France. That was to start the season. Right. Then we assumed we would have Lance McCullers and, and Luis Garcia back at some point midseason, roughly. And yet the best pitcher this year has been Ronel Blanco, a guy no Crazy, one even right? expected to be a starter. Honestly, hey, not just the best for the Astros. This has been one of the right. best in the American League. No, for sure. 1.99 ERA. I mean, the guy is tremendous. And I mean, where would we be without Ronel Blanco? I mean, when you think about the struggles, like J.P. France is hurt. Uh, Christian Javier is hurt. Jose Urquidy is hurt. We're still waiting on Garcia and McCullers. Hunter Brown has been mediocre really at best. Robert Valdez yeah. has been a complete up and down. Justin Verlander mm-hmm. has really been up and down. Their only consistent arm in their starting rotation has been Ronel Blanco. Without him, I don't know where the hell they'd be. And it was great to see him bounce back yes. after uh, after 10 days off, 10, 10 games off, excuse <laughs> yeah. me, and um, really not miss a beat. No. I mean, he looked just as sharp. The fastball is there. And, you know, I, I think that the sample size is big enough now that you can say that this is who he is. Now, is yeah. he a guy that's going to pitch to a 1-9 ERA the rest of his career? Well, probably not. No, but uh, you know, I think that there's enough data around around the league now to say that you know he's not surprising anybody with that changeup. You know, no. it's also that changeup has made his slider better. It's made his fastball more effective. So you know, you look at all that stuff and you go, okay, you know, yeah, maybe maybe everybody hasn't seen it yet, but. Uh, it, it's such a good pitch and the way he can move it around and, and everything he does with it, uh, it really has just, it's been a game changer for his career. Yeah. And I, what's so interesting about, uh, about this is that Renault Blanco has been like a guy that has had promise throughout sure. his career. But I think most people anticipated that that promise was going to be from the bullpen just simply because, um, he didn't have more than two pitches. Yeah, he you was know. a two-pitch pitcher. He was yeah. a two-pitch pitcher. And then last year, they're like, let's stretch him out. And so in order to stretch him out, he needed to have another pitch. Sure. So he figured out the changeup. It, it's it's remarkable to me. And, and, you know, guys have these kind of seasons sometimes. You see that where you have a pitcher that suddenly blossoms like kind of later or mm-hmm. has, you know, like look at Chris Sale this year. I think a lot of people had kind of written off and he's suddenly having a great year. Sure. Um, I think that when you see it, it does happen, but for the Astros, it's almost a necessity at this point, given that he is really the anchor of a lineup that shouldn't, he shouldn't have even been in to start the season as it, it's just so weird how baseball works like that. Well, their depth is already in trouble. 
Yes. You know, with, with Arkady. Now, you, you couldn't count on Arkady because he was coming back from injury. Mm-hmm. Uh, but still, that's a blow to your uh, to your depth. And then with, with Javier going down, it's the same thing. I mean, now you really don't have a, uh, have a choice. If you're going to stay relevant, you're, go- you're going to have to uh, – these guys are going to have to be healthy and yep. have to step up and, and, and not just be, you know, warm bodies in the rotation. They're going to have to be good. Yeah, you know they're they're in a big series right now. They lost last night to Seattle mm-hmm. three to two. You know Fromber was okay. He gave you a quality start. Mm-hmm. And, you know, uh, as a as a baseball guy, I anytime your pitching staff holds you to less than three runs, you should win those baseball games. I agree. But the problem is the Seattle Mariners and it was Bryce Miller. It was just uh, he was very good, and their bullpen is very good. We knew this was the this was the worry every single year. It seems like for the last four or five years about the Seattle Mariners is these dudes can pitch. Yeah, you know the the question was would they ever score any runs? Well, they scored three last night, right. and that was enough. But you got to like the fact that that Fromber, even though he wasn't on, it wasn't his best game. Right. You know, he wasn't striking everybody out. He walked a few guys, but, Mm -hmm. you know, he held them down to three runs. And then the bullpen did a nice job coming in to hold it right there to keep you in the ballgame. But, you know, this is just one of those things. The Seattle Mariners can pitch. And and what you're looking to do is come out of this series at a minimum. It's splitting the series. Agreed. Okay. You know. You go into a first place team, uh, and it's a team that you're chasing. What you really are trying to guard against, and of course you're doing this all the time, but mm-hmm. is is getting swept. Because if you get swept, now you're in big trouble. Now you're you know seven and a half games back or whatever it is, mm-hmm. you know, a big number. You're you're a big number under five hundred again, and now the work that you've done has been for naught. So uh, that's really the that's really the approach here is is you know win a couple of these baseball. Yeah. games games get the heck out of town and uh and then try and get back on a roll well seattle's an interesting uh team just in general because like you said they've got outstanding pitching particularly from their uh starting rotation Mm -hmm. they've just great pitching their bullpen is good not great but they're what i mean they're what second to last in baseball in uh in uh, batting average i mean this is a team that just does not it's it's a team that doesn't make contact really is one Mm -hmm. of the one of the big problems they have they're not a good contact hitting team yeah but they it's a big swing team yeah they'll hit they'll hit a bunch of home runs on you you know the old the old earl weaver approach which is play for the three-run homer right exactly (laughs) and i it's 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 they're an interesting team but and the astros look are met by the metrics are good offensively and they're going to have to show that in this series i think because listen i i they're their pitching is not going to match up maybe it will game by game but you know you're going to put spencer or getty out there and guys like that and god bless spencer getty because again another guy who i'm not sure where we'd be if he hadn't come up and been good or at least you know given you some quality um but yeah they have to this is a they have to split the series um when you look around at baseball Mo- a lot of divisions now you're starting to see that distance growing uh sure. you know you're starting to see it um i think a- the nl west is only like four or five games with the dodgers but there you can start to see that gap is widening and this is a time where certainly if you're seattle you want to start to widen that gap now to force the astros into making some dumb decisions or and you know or you know not being able to catch up right well, I mean, listen, you're, you're talking, we're, we're basically a third of the way, way through, yeah. uh, maybe a few days short, but mm-hmm. you know, we've been playing for two months and, uh, my goodness, it sure seems like a lot longer than that for Astros fans, <laughs> just simply because the roller totally. coaster, I mean, you know, back in the day, I can remember when the Texas cyclone, when, uh, Astro world came out with the Texas cyclone and how, how scary that roller coaster was because the Hills were so big yep. and you were going so fast. That's been the 24 season. You know, it's been the highest of highs and the lowest of lows. But, uh, you know, bottom line is they're still in the hunt. Nobody's mm-hmm. running away with this. And that's why you want to look at this at a minimum of coming coming out of this series two and two. 
because then all you did, you, you kissed your sister. You're just, you're just <laughs> that you're just right there, uh, right where you were when you started. Right. And now you can go back to work. I mean, they're playing good baseball. They're playing much more consistent baseball. And that's something we've talked about in the past is that yeah. it's not really about winning streaks. Winning streaks come to an end. Mm-hmm. You don't, you're not looking just to get hot. You're looking to sustain that, uh, um, that consistency. And that is by winning series. Yeah. yeah you would love them to sweep the a series but they did what they needed to do yeah. one two out of three now they're in the seattle series so you know the, the the quality of baseball is much better okay in really every aspect but it they still keep getting bit by this injury bug yeah you got to string together the series wins i mean it, yeah. especially now i mean they've been playing worse ball clubs than they had previously uh and so you, you, when you're playing the Angels and the A's and teams like that, you, you've got to go out there and, and beat up on the, the little sisters of the poor, as they like to say. And I, right. that's what they're going to have to do. And Seattle's not one of those teams. So this is the time where you want to kind of try and make your mark and show that you belong in this in this division. That You know, we have to really address the fact that Jose Abreu has returned. Mm-hmm. And I'm just going to, I'm going to give you just my kind of two cents. And then I want, I, I really want to hear your thoughts on this. Okay. I understand the, I don't understand necessarily the logic behind it, but I understand the reasoning behind what they're doing. They have him signed to a three year deal. They're not going, I mean, unless the wheels just completely fall off, they're certainly not going to cut him. Sending him down to get simulated baseball games was enough of a of a of a move that that was his borderline you know cutting him right and now he comes back my, this is my only concern okay Jose Obreu comes back they send Joey Lo Perfido down that's fine I think Joey Lo Perfido could probably benefit from playing every single day at Triple A um, but my concern is that well you know Singleton's actually been playing pretty well mm-hmm. so last night he DH'd him but my thing is is that. I'm not sure how you can bring Jose Abreu back this week against this team, put him right back in there and be like, all right, let's do it. You know, and then Joe Spada said the other day, this team can't get to where it wants to be without Jose Abreu. And I thought that is crazy. I know you protect your players. I get it. Right. But that seems to me like a crazy comment to make when you consider who Jose Abreu is now. Forget the back of the baseball card comments mm-hmm. that everybody makes. He's 37 years old. You know, he's not going to be the player he was before. And I feel like at this point in his career, and especially with what the Astros are trying to do to get back to a World Series, you know, I don't want to go the Patriots way, right? Where they're just like, well, that's it. Got to get him out of here. You know, what the yeah. Bill Belichick used to do. But there is some something to understanding that, if it's not working, something's got to change. And I've got to hope the Astros have a pretty short leash on him. Now, in fairness, he hit a double last night. Mm-hmm. Um, and drove in a run. And drove in a run. But it, it feels so tenuous to me at a time when the Astros really don't have um, any business being tenuous. Yeah, um, it, this is such a difficult situation. Yeah, because you know, if you are a non-analytics guy, if you are a ba- you know what we'll call a baseball guy, you know the back of the baseball card, which you know we've talked about this this idea mm-hmm. several times this year, uh, probably too many times. You know, because what does it mean? It means that you know, it, when all when all is said and done you're going to come up with similar numbers to the back of your baseball card. Mm -hmm. Okay. There have been players around the league. Justin Upton was one of them that he's going to get, Justin would get hot for like, you know, maybe two, two week stretches. And I mean, hit like 800 Mm -hmm. and yeah, he'll end up putting up his numbers, his home run numbers, but you, you know, there was just no consistency to get there. And that's what you're really looking for. Um, this is a tough series to come back because we've already discussed how good the Seattle Mariners pitching is. Um, and, and one of the problems he has really had, he being a Brayu this season is dealing with velocity. And a lot of those guys that are coming, especially even in the rotation, you know, those dudes are bringing the noise. They're bringing the heat. Right. So, um, you know, we'll see if he can, he can, uh, he can, you know, kind of turn this thing around with some quality at bats. Um, you know, I was kind of surprised he didn't get more at bats when he was in Florida. I thought that was the whole reason to go down there was so that, you know, he could get, 
you know, 25 at bats in, you know, 30 at bats, you know, in a matter of just a few days, just go in there, yeah. you know, when they're playing their, their simulated games, just go in there. He starts, he leads off every inning or he hits third every inning, whatever mm-hmm. it is. Um, and just get as many at bats, but he only got, I think, what was it? Nine at bats, 11 plate appearances Some of them. over the few days he was down there. Um, it does seem like, and we've heard reports today. We saw um, some reports that you know he does seem to be in a much better, better mental state, and that's everything. Mm-hmm. Confidence is everything. It doesn't matter. You know, has Jose Abreu forgotten how to hit? No, no. he hasn't. His confidence is shot. And that's something that comes and goes. It doesn't matter how much success you've had in the past. This is a what have you done for me lately yeah. league and sport. So, you know, that confidence comes and goes just like it does for a rookie. So, you know, he, he, with him in a little bit different mental spot, maybe that'll make a difference. But, yeah, what? where does this go? Well, it's really up to Jose. If Jose can, can start being a productive member in the lineup again, then, okay, then then he's going to get to play. You know, mm-hmm. the thing about Singleton, he has played pretty well, okay? Yeah, he's not great. It's not he's like he's lit, he's lit no. up. Okay, he's played solid defensively, Mm -hmm. but it's not like, you know, you're still talking about a guy hitting in the low 200s. Yep. He's got plenty of walks. His on base percentage is good. Um, But, you know, you're you're in a run producing location on the field, that being first base. You know, it's not about getting on base. It's about driving in runs. Yeah, you got some other guys that can do that, but, you know, that is a power position being a first base. And Singleton's got plenty of power. And again, He's play, He's held his own. There's no mm-hmm. doubt about it. I, 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 you know, when I see Singleton in the lineup, um, you know that I don't, <laughs> you know, I feel fine about that. There's no right. eye rolls or anything like that because you know he's played himself into that position in the situation that that they're in. But the Jose thing, we're just gonna have to wait and see. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know how long the leash is going to be. I would think it's not very long just because of everything they've already gone through with this. What does that mean? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if if Jim Crane and company are willing to eat as much money as they still owe him. So. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see. Hopefully it all, it all, all this is for not this conversation means yeah, nothing true. because he starts hitting better and that's just going to help the team win. You know, I, I also think it, it is there, there is a point and this is something that we've kind of brought up before, but there's a point where you have to start going, what are you, were you guys thinking with first and third base? Like, what mm. were you thinking? Not having any real viable options. Cause if you think about it, Prior to, you know, last year, they brought in Jose Abreu. They didn't have a backup for Jose Abreu. They had to bring in John Singleton to kind of be the backup. They don't have anybody backing up at third except maybe Craig Kessinger or something like that. It is. You'd have to wonder, like, you did know that Alex Bregman was going to be a free agent after this season, right? I mean, you guys, there doesn't have to seem – I mean, they've got a boatload of outfielders and other positions, but they seem to really have kind of missed it with third and first and it's you know it puts it's put them in a kind of a precarious position frankly well i understand the reason at third base okay because bregman bregman has been you know he's had some injuries Mm -hmm. but when he's healthy he's he's been he'll he'll play every single solitary Mm -hmm. game so what do you need you just need somebody that can go out the defensively and and hold their own whether it's mercio dubon or kessinger Mm -hmm. or whoever it is that can you know spell him for a day here or there uh, I think what you look at and you question a little bit more and you couldn't see this really mm-hmm. coming is the struggles that, that Alex has had offensively, Yeah, you know, because he's got such a great eye at the plate and usually that means a quality at bat, but you know, he just hasn't been able to put it together consistently, mm-hmm. uh, here in 2024. So I, I think that's the surprising part, but because the other side of it is, yeah, he's a free agent. And I understand that, but you know, as much as he's, are you going to take him out of the lineup? No, right. You're not. No, Just because I, he's a superior, he's a superior defensive player, even though he had a lot of errors last right. year. But, uh, you know, you're, you're, he's your third baseman. Yeah. And if he's healthy, he's going to be in the lineup. Right. Not because you just don't have any other options, but because that's how this team was designed. Right. My whole thought is, is just that up until really this season, we've really seen the Astros being able to plug in players when they needed to, you know, sure. they had Jeremy Pena ready when Carlos Correa left. They had Kyle Tucker to be that big time outfielder after George Springer, even if not playing center field, it, you know, 
they have outfielders in this in this organization. They have shortstops. They have second baseman. Obviously, they had Yiner Diaz. They even had Corey Lee at catcher. Um, they just don't have anything at first and second, at first base and yeah. third base, and that's it's just it puts you in a bad, it puts you in a very uncomfortable situation when things like well, this, this happen. This is the reason why, you know, teams, you know, there's been a few teams that can spend a lot of money, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. Dodgers, uh, Yankees, Padres, and they can kind of be relevant year in and year out. And yeah. You can count on them being relevant, um, but that's why. You know, a team like the St. Louis Cardinals, who seems to be, they've had a couple of hiccups here and there the last few years, but that they're always getting players from their minor leagues. Well, the problem is when you're in one of these runs, when the team is yeah. built from the inside out, from the minor leagues up, like the Astros were, uh, you know, there's going to be a time that you're not getting high draft picks. When you're right. winning every year, you're not getting high draft picks. And there's a big difference between a top 10 overall pick mm-hmm. and a, you know, 25, 26, 27th overall pick. There's a big difference in those type of players coming out of amateur baseball. Yeah. So, you know, there's going to be a time that the the cover becomes barren. And that's where the Astros kind of are right now. You yeah, know, when they top l- pitching prospect, yeah. is Spencer Argetti. And you when know, you lose was, all your, one. when you lose a bunch of guys because you get penalized, uh, well, and then you also help. whether you're you're making uh, in move tra- in season yeah. trades at the trade deadline, yep. those are always for prospects yep. because since you're winning, looking to win, you're not going to take away from your 26 man roster. You're mm-hmm. trying to enhance your 26 man roster. So you know all that. Wh- so where does where do those new players come from? Well, they come from the prospect list, and yep. you know the Astros have traded away a lot of prospects as yep. they should have trying to win World Series. But at some point, and I'm not saying we're at that point, right. but at some point, you know, that becomes a real issue. Yep. I mean, you got to rob Peter to pay Paul, and that's just kind of how it goes. Mm-hmm. Unless you're, unless you're money bags and uh, own the Mets or something. But um, as <laughs> I, I will say two bright spots. First of all, Kyle Tucker. Let's just say right away. I mean, I I've always liked Kyle Tucker as a player. I've always thought he was a very very good player, one of the better right fielders in baseball. Mm-hmm. But he, I mean, he's a beast this year. It leads yeah. the, uh, well, leads the majors in home runs, way up there in OPS. I mean, the guy is just crushing baseballs, uh, and and he's so relaxed about it, and he's so yeah. chill. You can tell he goes up there with the same mindset every single at bat. He's excellent defensively. Um, he's a guy that's just, you know, he is <laughs> the opposite of Alex Bregman. He is setting yeah. himself up for the payday of a century. Right. Um, and, and then the other one is Jake Myers, right? The faith in Jake Myers appears to be finally paying off um, for the Astros higher ups because Myers, it really looks like the player everybody hoped he would be. You know, he's, yeah. he's hitting a few home runs here and there, but mainly he's, he's, hit, he's making good contact. He plays outstanding defense in center field, one of the better center field defenders in baseball. Mm-hmm. At least they got a couple of those guys out there that are really making the team look like they're making good decisions. Never mind some. Never mind Jeremy Pena hit, still hitting over three hundred. Sure, yeah. So Tuck, I mean Tuck's doing what we expect Tuck to do. You know the the difference in Kyle Tucker this year than maybe two years ago is uh, that dirty word in baseball expectations. Mm. We expected him to do what he's doing now. Now we still have to appreciate it because he's been so good. Uh, you know, leading the league or, or close to leading yeah. the league in so many different offensive categories. But yeah, you know, we expected that. Now Myers on the other side, uh, he's had a great month of May. I mean, no. that's that's really what this has come down to. Is it playing time? That's part of it. Is it health? That's a big part of it. Yep. Uh, you know, the question is still, uh, I still look at this and Jake, and I hope he continues to do this because the Astros need him to do it, mm-hmm. is is this just a hot run or is this who he is now? And, you know, unfortunately, uh, the answer is we don't know. No nope. time is going to tell. You know, there's going to be a time that he cools off. Okay, everybody does. The question is, when he does cool off, does he go back to not able to get any hits at all, no quality at bats, or is he right. able to scratch a few hits, kind of tread water, hold the numbers where they are until he gets hot again? And that's when he becomes a real, you know, bona fide everyday big league center fielder is when those downsides are not nearly as as severe as once they what they once were. There's something about the comfort level that comes with somebody at a position that knowing you don't have to 
de- worry about it. You know, there's yeah. something of, like the Jose Altuve's and Kyle Tucker's and now Jeremy Pena, frankly, um, you know, being that way. There's a there's a, like a, a level to that of saying, OK, we know these guys are going to be good. Right. Even mm-hmm. your, Jordan Alvarez, who's mired in still kind of a mini slump. We know that Jordan is going to hit the baseball. Right. Yeah. The, the Astros struggles this year. And I think it's something that fans probably are frustrated with. I certainly know I am, is that there's not as many of them as there have been in the past. You know, there's no. not as many guys where you just go, oh, thank God we got that guy there, you know, right. and it's just, and well, that's uh, you know, the unfortunate side of that, Jeff, is the, a lot of what that, where that anxiety comes from is their record. Yeah. You know, you know, was this a great offensive team last year? <clears throat> I, I don't think so. No. You know, I, I thought that they pitched their rear ends off. Yes, they did. Um, well, they you know, only same threw thing like, with the year before. They only had like eight uh, starting they, pitchers last year or something ridiculous. Yeah, they, were, they were a, I mean, just their pitching staff was just so healthy and dominant. That's what it's really been. Yep. And, you know, so when you have one part of the team, like we just talked about the Seattle Mariners, you were saying how great their pitching staff, but they're among the league worst in hitting. Yep. Well, they're still a first place team. You know? I know, and if it's a, it's a mediocre division to say the least, uh, yeah. I'm not going to dispute that. But the bottom line is they're still in first place, and the reason is is because they have one part of their team that is dominant, yeah. and that is that is mostly their starting pitching. You know, when you have when you run a starting a rotation out there on a daily basis, and you know that these dudes are probably not going to give up four runs man, that just takes so much pressure off yeah. your offense because now, you know, you don't, you know, whenever you, you, you go into a game and go, okay, we probably need seven runs to, to, to win tonight. Man, that's a tall task. You know, that's not easy to do uh, on a daily basis. So, you know, when, when, when one part of your team is dominant, uh, it just takes pressure off the other one. You know, you've got an offense that's lighting it up right now. You know, they, they're scoring, you know, seven, eight, nine runs. Pitching staff's going, yeah, put me in, coach. <laughs> you know, I think I can hold a seven-run lead. So, uh, but, you know, to go back to the Astros, the other side of this is when you don't have some that's dominant, now all of a sudden, you know, you're, you're, you're left scratching your head and trying to figure things out. Yeah. Now, again, they've played much better as of late. They've, they're winning series the way we want them to. It's just going to take time for them to get back to that up to that 500 mark because the hole was so deep. Yeah, it, it, it's something. It, um, when you look at a team like this that has kind of had that up and down, like you talked about that sort of roller coaster thing, um, it is. You, you just get. It, it's hard to. It's frustrating, and it's and it's very. Um, it's destabilizing. Right. Yeah. And because mm-hmm. you're, you know, you're just, you, you can't count on things like you thought you could. All right. One thing we can count on is that Angel Hernandez is terrible. And now we can count <laughs> on the fact that he is gone. So yeah. anybody who didn't see it, Angel Hernandez, the arguably the worst umpire in all of baseball, uh, has retired from baseball. He spent two weeks negotiating a settlement with, with Major League Baseball, which just tells you. One, baseball wanted him gone, and two, right. that the umpires' union, I mean, they must own naked photos of uh, Rob Manford, although I don't know who would want to see those. <laughs> um, but, but I do think there was there was an article, and this is really what I want to talk about, because I'm, you know, ding-dong, the witch is dead. But um, the, the thing that I wanted to talk about is there was a story in The Athletic last week about Angel Hernandez, and it was, I don't want to call it a sympathetic piece exactly, but it talked about how it's been difficult on his family with all the criticism mm. and everything and all this. And it was kind of like, Oh, there's a human side. Down. You know what? Who's, you know, whose fault that is though. The, whose fault that is that everybody's being tough on, on your family. It's your fault. You're yeah. terrible. If you weren't so bad at what you did. And if you weren't such a grump on the field that caused so much annoyance for so many players and fans, then none of this would be a problem. So Listen, man, he had a long tenured career in baseball. Many of us wish we could have had the job he had for as long as he oh, had. Sure. Now he gets to ride off in the sunset with whatever money he's got. So, hey, do, good luck and don't let the door hit yeah. you. Congratulations on a long career to Angel <laughs> Hernandez. Okay. Exactly. You know, the, what people don't realize is you go back now, you got to go back, you know, a decade plus. 
But Angel Hernandez was actually one of the the better ball and strike umpires. Was in he league. really? Yes, he was. Fascinating. He was. Um, now that's changed, oh, and you, uh, like you said, he was so confrontational, and at times it seemed like he was trying to make bad calls just for the confrontation like, uh, and then you? you know suing major league baseball uh, you're right a lot of the bad optics a lot of the issues that he's has the pressures that has been on his family they're self-imposed you know yeah i mean to tell you the truth he should have uh, you know what a job being a major league umpire is yeah the travel is horrendous yeah you know you're you're on the road you're actually on the road more than the players mm-hmm. are you know, they yeah. get a couple weeks off every year. I mean, it's a tough job, but it's also an extremely stable job. Yeah, when you're you know, a crew chief too, you have to do you have to do some really really horrible things in yeah. order to lose your job. But uh, yeah, it, there's been uh, you know he is. I don't think there's any doubt over the last decade plus he has been the most polarizing umpire. Yeah. And you know, you talk to any umpire, what do they want to be known for? not ever talking about them, right. you know, that they're just in the background. And when you're not talking about umpires, yeah. that means they're probably doing a pretty good job. Well, guess what? We talked about Angel a yeah. lot. But again, congratulations on your your retirement. And uh, yeah. see you later. Exactly. My thing is, <laughs> who hurt you, Angel? Like, why? So, yeah, I, feel like, I feel like at some point he was dragged why into such the, the bitterness. He was dragged yeah. in the commissioner's office and they held up like a bobblehead and they were like, show us on show us on here where the bad man hurt you. You know, it's like, I mean, <laughs> it's just like because he, he just he was so yeah. angry all the time. And it was like, so and look, I'm I don't have I'm not conspiratorial about almost anything. Conspiracy mm-hmm. theories al- already make me kind of crazy. And I don't think this about umpires. I, I'm not one of these people that believes that. There's a fix that's in with with officials in any league. I think officials are human and they make dumb mistakes sometimes, sure. like the rest of us do, right? Like what they, but Dan Patrick always used to say on ESPN, like the rest of us, they're day to day, right? They they make mistakes. The problem that I had with Angel Hernandez, and it's the problem that I have with with that I've had with NBA officials and NFL officials, although NFL to a lesser degree, for whatever reason, um, is the personality thing is the yeah. deciding to go out and impose your sort of personality onto the game. That always frustrated me because I'm like, you know what? Nobody, like you said, the best umpires are like the best offensive linemen in football. You just yeah. never hear about them. It's just right. the first time you hear about them, you're like, it's a penalty, right? So it's the same thing here. And yeah, so, that or you miss the block or right, whatever. Exactly. Yeah. So that's why, that's what I think. And, and honestly, I think that's what frustrated most players. You can see that when, you know, when people talk about it, uh, you certainly see that in other leagues when guys are like, Hey, this guy, like Scott Foster in the NBA, who's notorious. And, and at some point, if you're a league, you have to do something to stop that because then you take the focus off the players, which is where you want it to be all the time. Right. You always want those guys. And honestly, umpires can be fun. Like I, one of my favorite things about umpiring in baseball is when a catcher gets hit by a ball like in the face or a bat swings back mm-hmm. and the umpire is like goes out he gets some more balls he like dusts off the plate like there's such right. a gentlemanly sort of thing about the way that they handle those moments mm-hmm. and like so it don't ruin it you know everybody's gonna <laughs> boo you already just don't make it worse man that's your, all yeah. you gotta do just don't make it worse yeah, I mean it's it's a tough job, yeah. and and uh, you know when you do a good job, uh, you you don't get the pat on the back, no. you don't get the accolades, but that's you know that's the nature of being. If you don't, you know, if 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 you need those accolades, then you probably shouldn't be a major league umpire. Yeah, you know that's kind of <laughs> that's, that's exactly kind of right. how it. That's kind of how it works. That's but, it. Uh, but yeah, no more angel to beat up. We'll have to pick. We'll have to pick on oh, another umpire. I'm sure we'll have, there are plenty of options available. <laughs> I'm sure there are more than enough options available out there for everybody. Um, Mike, uh, I hope you stay dry, buddy. It, uh, I think it's it's, it's past here. We're not. It's I don't think calm it's down anymore. here. But who knows? That's who knows right. what we're in for? That's right. Stay safe out there, people. Oops, I think I lost your audio, buddy. Well, I'm gonna. I'll go ahead and wrap up since we're <laughs> on this. Um, thanks so much, everybody, for joining us. Um, 
appreciate all of you paying you know watching on youtube listening on apple stitcher and everything else you can follow us on hey i hear you now you can follow us online at believe in astros find me at uh, jeff balky mike is at mike stanton 29 all over social media and thanks to everybody again for listening we will be back sh- soon with another one i will not lose my power again as far as i know and i've had my covid for the year so uh, you can count on me to be back. Thanks, everybody. We will talk to you next time. As always, Adios. go Astros.